Welcome to my uh, inaugural <laughs> YouTube video. I have a uh, 2005 VW Passat here with a 2.8 liter motor and inside this messy garage this car has been here for many weeks um, up on jack stands it's the issues were clogged catalytic converter um, I guess it was both of them it's hard to say it was running really rough I had a what appears to be an internal water leak which probably caused them to clog that's my best guess so far and uh, so I had no water showing dripping for a while and I could see the uh, I was filling up the reservoir with um, you know periodic amounts so it was pretty scary so I'm figuring that's what was causing it so I had the typical codes for oxygen sensors uh, giving me bad values I can't remember the number exactly right now but anyway what I thought I would do is give you a quick kind of lessons learned of what went right and what went wrong of the catalytic converter changes for this car and I'm sure there's many of you out there that have better ideas so welcome to post them below uh, if you see better tricks that you've uh, experienced than me some people with this car for the catalytic converters actually pull the motor out I, I think that's not a bad idea I think that uh, it's a lot involved in that but as I'll show you, the reason that makes this job so hard is that for this particular motor, the pipes that go up to the exhaust manifolds have such a tight opening there uh, between the body and the transmission, you can't pull them down. You, so my, th this one has um, California and New York emissions. So there's a pre-catalytic converter up here next to the manifold. Uh, the the it's just it's just impossible to get it down so you actually have to lower the back of the subframe okay um down pretty far this is i had to actually pull the bolts okay all the way off and you're going to support it i have an engine lift here that i was using to help support that and um i also had a jack down below to help give some other supporting um, support for the uh, transmission and, and other parts. You don't want all that weight hung by this if you can help it because it, it is very heavy. Okay, so let me show you real quick up top what I did uh, to support this. This engine does not have a mount in the back already there. Mine didn't and I noticed that the ones in the junkyard didn't either. I just figured somebody had pulled it off and taken it somewhere <laughs> or never put it back on. But mine didn't have it uh, it has one here on the front off of this head and it's right here. You see some, let me get some light here. Uh, let's see. This is my other drop lights down below. So you can see this mount right here and that goes down and grabs the, uh, the head and also, you know, the, um, the engine block. So this particular mount right there, okay, I pulled off of a junkyard. Um, of another 2.8 and it's symmetrical so it fits back here also so you can see the mount right there if I have the light good for you and the bolts way down there okay where the light is and and the other bolts up high up here okay and I think I see why that they do this they that they're not already pre-mounted on these because all of this fuel wiring from the uh, from the, the fuel injectors is in the way. So there's a lot of pressure back here on these wires. There's a lot of stuff back here. And so what I ended up having to do was further protect the wires with this, you know, small piece of, uh, you know, a flex cover and, um, you know, help protect it against that mount because it's pinching up against it. So I'm guessing that's why these things are not on here already. So we, we have a lot of our plenum pipe off back here. Um, if we look down through here, we can see the top of that's the pre-cat. I'm assuming that's what they call it. Not many people say what it is, you know, in the videos and whatnot. So there's an upper oxygen sensor right here. It's pretty impossible to get your hand down in here and do anything. Um, there's a lot of hard stuff here on the back of the motor over here too. These are hard pipes. You can't get your arm back here. This is what makes the job so hard. There is a top bolt back here. Um, that's that's almost impossible to get to from the top. I never got to it on this side. Uh, the other side, 
I could get to it from the top. And you take your, uh, these are oxygen sensor wires. You take your reservoir out of here and you can, there's your, you can see the uh, oxygen sensor, the front one on this one. And there's the top bolt down there. If you guys can see that, let me try to get the camera closer. There's the top bolt. You can actually, if your hands are skinny enough, get down here and kind of start the nut. Um, but there's no swing in here. I mean, it is just crazy impossible um, to get this on. But you really have to be careful because you, you need these flanges to be really tight in there against that gasket. And this will fool you uh, when you're tightening these down that you think you have it and you really don't. So let's go over a couple of tricks that we used to get to these. Um, on that side, I used, I bought one of these double swivel, um, I guess ratchets, pretty much better word for it. You got your forward and reverse. And I used the quarter inch side of this. This was a Harbor Freight piece for like 25 bucks. And uh, it's a pretty nice part. And so I got to snuck, sneak this in here I should have brought the other light. But anyway, you sneak this in here, and I could break that one loose here. Very little swing, but I could break them loose. Um, so that was on that side. This part did not, this tool did not work on this side. I could not get it on there. And you're going to find things like the, the well of the oxygen sensor in your way. Um, I think these are bosels that I bought for the fronts up here. And they're built a little bit different than the stock. So that well is in a different location and it's so close to that nut that's down there that a regular sockets don't fit. They hit these wells, they hit the wells, there's angle issues. I mean, it is just a pain in the neck. So something I did to give me access. See, okay, now we have some light. Let's sneak it up in here. So what I did was, there's a uh, shield in here. Let me hang this light. And you take the shield out of this area right here it's a split shield it's not hard to get out and then i actually had to press in you see this heat shield here that's pressed inward because otherwise this will be in your way but having this opening in here gets you get your arm in here and you can actually touch these the top nut in here uh, from this side now you still have a really hard problem with wrenches in here uh, even shorties uh, that I used so basically something I should have pulled this out have it ready for you something like a quarter inch ratchet with a, a quarter inch 13 on the end of this quarter inch ratchet will get you in here and you can barely get it on that nut and you'll just get a little bit of swing vertically so that helped me out inside here otherwise all of the 13s that I had that were you know, angled 13s, flat 13s, ratchets, you name it. I've tried it. Um, pretty impossible for that top nut. It's, um, it's really tough. Getting the new one on was tough also. I did end up using this quarter inch extension with a universal on the end. It has a quarter inch universal on the end of this. And I snuck it up here along the pipe up this way and I was able to get it on that way and spin it a bunch of turns. You really need to be careful to make sure you get that flange flush. And something I did uh, to make sure of that, because you, you can't see it, is I used a camera. So, not that this is a Harbor Freight advertisement, but using these uh, scopes, this little fiber scope, really comes in handy let me get it to turn on for you come on there you go and when you use these scopes you can take and there's a light on the end you can take this scope and really feed it down in here tight and you can see the actual nut on the flange and I'll try to hold that still and maybe this video will come out for you hopefully you can see that but you can see the flange obviously right here and the nut. And so you can visually see that you're tight up against it because at one time I thought I was perfectly tight and there was a huge gap here. You could actually see the threads through there from the stud. So 
uh, just make sure that you take your time and really get that tight because I've seen on some forums uh, and the forums have been really helpful. Um, there, there are guys on the Passat forum that really have done this so many times or have helped so many other people and heard of their woes and successes that uh, use, use those resources. They're terrific people and uh, they're very willing to uh, help out. So uh, that's how I've gotten to those. Um, well, they're both on this side. Let's, um, maybe I'll take a second and show you the angle of how I got the bolt on this side. I basically, and we'll try it with this light, but it was kind of like a backhanded direction. Okay, I've jammed the work light up in here and I'm holding the camera with my fingers. So I'm gonna try to shove it up in here so we can really get a good idea of what we're looking at. You can see, if the light will stay still, that these bolts are way up in here and we're only looking at the bottom left one and the bottom right one and I doubt you can see the top one I'm not sure because I can't even really see where the end of the camera is I'm just jamming my hand up in there so to get to that top one my trick with this one was to backhand a wrench with my left hand I'm gonna kind of send my hand up in here to show you this was I put my hand up in here and I turned the wrench over backwards like this and I shoved it way up there okay and I know you can't really see this but I'm going to try it but I would get this wrench on the nut that way backhanding it and then I would push up or pull down accordingly to get to it that was my best way to tighten that and again just like the other side make sure that flange is flush uh, when you put it up in here okay so while we're on this side let's talk about down below what you have to do okay so we're at the bottom and there's our new cats and flexes these are the two pipes of course and i'm getting ready to install the drive shaft back on so we'll go over there and look at that side in a minute there's a new oxygen sensor here so you have to lower the whole motor like we were talking okay so here's the back subframe bolt the main one two supporting bolts okay to the body here and you're going to lower this one and the other side over there identical okay and you're going to do it slowly there's a lot of tension on the motor be very very careful as you do this slowly but you're going to back it down of course you're going to do the front ones first to loosen them okay the front ones are over here all right and there's three of them let's see on this side let me see if I get them there's one here one there and one back here okay hopefully you can see all this well and uh, and identical on the other side of the sway bar on the other side so loosen those first bring them down about halfway is what I did um, so you're not going to break anything or bend anything as you bring this motor downward okay and then after you have those loose then you start bringing these down on this side and i mean this thing comes down you need it down really far actually far enough you're going to be pulling these bolts all the way out pull these out first and then lower it with these and you're going to be pulling these all the way out i used another jack under here and to add some support you could put it under on this side on the engine mount stuff over here um once in a while i think i put it up here on the back of the uh, center differential up here on the trainee and give it some support that way um just be careful with that so you're going to bring this down a lot so that you have room to get these pipes out um like we said there's there's pre-cats up here and see how tight this space is it's even tighter on that side. You just don't have room to get it out. So you have to really create a lot of space for this. Um, but once you do bring it down, you'll see that it's it's got a lot of tension on your top piece. Some use those uh, spanner cranes that go across the uh, rails, which is probably better than mine. I already had my engine hoist, so I'm using that. And, uh, and then you bring it down with enough space. So they're gonna be about this far down 
to give you that space. So it gets tight in here to get on underneath, but that's uh, what you have to do to uh, get it out. And I'll show you something on the other side. Let me crawl over there. Okay, we're on the passenger side underneath the uh, right catalytic converter, pre-cat I should say, up against the uh, right exhaust manifold bolts. And you can see I have an S wrench on the left nut. You see those transmission oil cooler lines coming down? They're in the way of sockets. Um, and also, with the flange designed on this, I could not get the head of a ratcheted um, combo wrench on there either, um, closed or open, so that was really tough. So this was one little trick where I put an S wrench on there, and since it's swinging towards me, I could get the leverage uh, to make get some uh, get some strength on that nut as I crank it up in there. Your side, and kind of just holding the camera up here as tight as I can. And you can see that there's very, very little space here. And you see this, let me get my right hand, let me get off the creeper. As you get up under here, this heat shield, um, and you bring this down, okay? And let's say you're ready to put this on, okay? You've gotten the old one off finally, and you're ready to put the new one. I still could not get the right pipe up in here with all this lower down. I still could not feed it through this channel. So what I had to do on this side was get it low enough and get the pre-cat on this side. So I fed it on an angle with the pre-cat over here and snuck it up in this cavity, okay, because this is all low. I snuck it up in here and then I brought the pipe over this way. It's kind of hard to show you. Um, as I've already had it done, I apologize. I just wasn't thinking about making a video back then and I brought it in that way then I pulled it over to position before starting to bolt it up to the front and uh, back here on the back support obviously that bolts coming out with the the support to make room also and uh, and you can see from all these crazy little supports I have holding it in place here let me move the light you're gonna need to keep things nice and secure, okay, before, obviously I don't have the back pipes in because I'm putting the drive shaft in. Now, over here, let me get the light back. What I noticed when I was pulling off the old system was I had a leaky seal, which sounds pretty common from being on the forums, forums that, let me get up in here. So this is the center differential. So I had a leaky seal inside this differential. Um, I've got the yoke piece back in now. There's a, what, T40 in here. They got a funky bolt. They want you to replace it. I went ahead and bought one. I don't know that you really have to, um, but you'll have to hold it still, put two, st two bolts back in here, put, put some kind of wrench or pry bar on here to hold it still while you yank it off. It doesn't have a crazy amount of torque on it. And I can't remember what the new torque was. You'd have to look at a, at a manual for it, but it wasn't much. It was like 40 foot pounds maybe. And so I put the, uh, as I put the new seal, you pull the yoke out obviously, and you pry the old seal out. There's some other videos on that. I have to tell you, do not use a seal punch tool to put the new in. You don't need to do it, okay? Because what happens on this one is there's no stop for the seal. So you have to be very careful not to over push it, okay? And as I experienced with the first two, um, the when you push it in, it goes too far in and you just can't pull that seal out. You can't pry it out without destroying it. So I've put, <laughs> I think I've bought three of them for this one. They're only about, eight nine dollars each for a good one um i didn't buy the oem for like 30 some dollars well when you put it in i put it in by hand so i pushed it in of course i used the seal grease that they recommended it was expensive it was like 20 dollars for the vw seal grease i don't know that everybody really says you have to use that but i did you fill the cavity with it inside the the seal on the back and on the inside but anyway i put some on the outside and i pushed it on and I kind of worked it around by hand, okay, 
with gentle pressure around and I finally got it to go in evenly and you put it in just past the um, um, just past the actual radius piece that you'll see where the seal is it doesn't go in that far okay just got some grease all over my fingers so anyway um, so you'll push it in gradually so when you put this yoke back in you want to feel it hit that radius piece hitting some of the metal you don't want it on the seal obviously because it'll be touching it and it'll destroy it so be very careful how you put that in and there's probably others that have some better advice um, on that as well as a separate install but anyway it was leaking pretty bad I saw it dripping out of here when I finally exposed this because you you know it takes a lot to get to this stage you have to take obviously the exhaust off and then you're gonna take these shields off that allow you to even see this stuff and um, and then of course I saw the drip so good time to change that out and make that nice and dry so we're at that stage right now where I'm ready to put the drive shaft back in and you know you buy new um, gaskets for it I put mine on the end on this side come on light and uh, maybe you can see it if I put it around there and you fill up some new grease in there I use some synthetic I think uh, Valvoline grease in there and I bought new bolts I did buy new ones because they don't have a ton of torque on them I think these were just 19 foot pounds um, no these were no I'm sorry these are 41 foot pounds and these on the carrier bearing are like 19 they're not a lot so I'm sure I'll have an episode tonight <laughs> putting this in um, by myself isn't easy but you don't want a lot of angles and yanking going on on this bearing it's it's like a rubber surrounded uh, bearing so it's uh, pretty fragile and so on the back I have some more extension here there's the back differential you can see that's prepped and ready and I went ahead and put the new gasket on that around those bolts and uh, so that's my goal tonight get that one on there so after all this we're going to go to the front of the motor and and start on the timing belt water pump cam seals all the fun up there and uh, maybe I'll give you guys a couple more videos for that but uh, so those are the basic tricks for this type of job that I had experience you can see that I'm way up here on jack stands I would get it as high as you can safely it's not easy on this car I bought some other um, attachments to get me on these rails on the outside uh, for next time I uh, I'll have those to get better support I didn't have them for this one, but I would get it up as high as you can because it'll be going in and out with the creeper a lot and this is not a one-day job trust me plan on it being in here for up on stands for a while because uh, you'll find yourself needing to buy some parts um, you'll find yourself too tired to continue <laughs> I'm in my 50s so uh, it's it's not easy for us older guys to do this stuff uh, quick and fast and uh, went ahead and drained a differential fluid and put fresh in while you have nice access to this okay so I would fully advise that sometimes I maybe some people will leave them in for the lifetime but I went ahead and changed mine out while I had access and of course certainly the front one was uh, leaking so I had to uh, top that off they do suggest that you drive the car 15 minutes come back break the whole exhaust down and then retop off the fluid I don't know that I'm gonna do that okay um, this is just a lot of effort to get this exhaust off so uh, to even get yourself back up in here to check and top the fluid off um, you know using the standard pumps that you buy on the uh, quart containers worked fine it's not easy you have to use like a I used a needle nose pliers to hold the actual uh, inlet come on light to hold the inlet what are you doing to me oh your bulbs loose oh there's some exciting strobe action for you anyway I'll fix that in a minute so I had to hold some needle nose pliers on the actual inlet fill piece in there to hold it still while you're pumping backwards or whatever with whatever arm you have available <laughs> and then change the uh, this one's only uh it's a little less than one quart or for this one and the back one's like 1.6 or someone like that um 
but anyway obviously it oozes out all over the place when it's uh full and so uh, but yeah so it's nice to tackle that at the same time anyway like i said um use the people on the forums all that you can they are a huge help and uh, they they save me with a lot of advice and you know tricks like going in through the side here really helped out a lot and you know wish that the uh, germans had made this easier i don't know why they had to make this such a hard job um but at least you know i could save the car label your oxygen sensors these are the new cables obviously they're crazy long so i'm gonna have to clean them up as i bring them up in here and figure out a way to wrap them without touching everything um a couple vacuum lines had to be disconnected over here to get access on that side and um uh, and then we'll eventually get to the front of the motor and then do the timing belt. Well, things more I forgot to mention. When you're doing your wiring uh, for your new oxygen sensors or say you had to remove the old and you had to cut them loose, the uh, you'll need some of these. Uh, I guess it's just a snap tie, but it has the uh, ribs to go into the holders. Um, and you'll be cutting, if you're putting new ones in like I did, you'll be cutting away the old ones. And uh, these are, aren't as good as stock. These were some at AutoZone in their electrical section. Um, they work, but they don't hold as good as the originals. The originals have a nice harder piece of plastic in here that snaps in there real tight. Uh, while I'm here, here's the new bolts. Look like they put some, like, some kind of red Loctite on them. These are for the uh, drive shaft uh, bolts. Uh, outfits like ECS are great resources for parts for this. Uh, they did a good job of at least giving you options. Um, certainly, Rock Auto took care of me for the, um, the exhaust with different pieces to make that system happen. And, you know, you can get your rental tools for your auction sensors for free at Advance or an Auto Zone, you know, where you just rent it for a while. And I used this one. Now, speaking of that, when I had the engine lowered on an angle with the whole subframe, it was really hard to get up in here and get that front oxygen sensor cranked down. So I threaded them on by hand while I could get my arms in here through our passageway up top. And then I went ahead and, and, it'll, and it gives you room after you bring the engine all the way up and torque down. You'll have room to get your, your rental tool on here vertically and access it from the top with an extension wrench up top to crank it down. So I thought I would uh, remind uh, of that trick. There's always some kind of thing I always forget to say as I'm going along. When I was talking about this tool on the, um, on the driver's side, getting that nut loose, I was uh, looking at other tools that might have helped. There are, there are some like 14 inch metric ratcheted, um, you know, closed end wrenches like these that are like 14 inches long. That might have done a lot more for me uh, if I had invested in those to access from the top. When you get sockets on the, certainly the 3 8 side, there's no way it would fit, but the uh, quarter inch side, it was able to get the old one off, like I said, but, uh, but not on the new. There's the uh, Universal with the short 13 quarter, quarter inch drive. That helped me out a lot, like I was saying when I was shoving it in from this side. And you can use some of that on the driver's side nuts too to get to it and uh, get them get them started. Um, tool wise, I'll put some other links. There may be some half moon wrenches. The gear wrench sells some half moons uh, that would probably help you maybe get to the top one on the other side better than that backhand trick I was showing you uh, from the other side. Um, where they have a nice half moon shape to them and it really allows it to reach around a corner so that might be helpful i think they were like they weren't cheap i think they were like 100 bucks for only like four or five of them but uh you know a good tool like that can really get you out of a bind so uh i guess one more thing i wanted to say a quick shout out to uh everybody at passat world uh your support's been great charles at the humble mechanic uh he runs a great website ask questions, has a blog, uh, does all kinds of good stuff for VW owners. And um, 
just wanted to say, oh, the, the car is a great driving car. That's why I'm putting all this effort into it. Want to try to keep it alive for my daughter for a while <laughs> to get some more miles out of it through college. And uh, so otherwise, you know, it would be tough to uh, pay somebody to do this kind of work because uh, I've heard people getting, you know, changing these out and paying two, three thousand dollars to get these catalytic converters changed with some exhaust and uh, a lot of flex pipes uh, I've seen from other videos breaking and uh, splitting. And this is right about that age in the miles. This is 130 some thousand on it. And uh, this maybe 140, I should say. But there, this is about the time where you see a lot of these things happen. Uh, exhaust leaks, rust, you name it. And uh, so there weren't any other videos out there that really talked about this type of change. Um, I know another fellow, Thomas, uh, does a really good job with his YouTube videos. And uh, he was changing one where it didn't have the uh, pre-cats and he did the passenger side. And you can tell he used like, you know, three, four foot extensions with some wobbles to try to get to that top nut. He did a great job doing that. But uh, I couldn't get to that. Obviously you don't have a lift. <laughs> so uh, maybe someday, right? And, uh, but anyway, thanks for all the help for everybody for helping me out. And I uh, want to let you know that uh, you could do this job too if you were uh, in the same situation. Just have to give yourself some, uh, some extra time. All right, good luck to you.